It's a little bit confusing at first, but pH is highly relevant for cleaning and in this video I'm going to tell you why. You see different pHs will clean different types of soil. Not only that though, different pHs will also damage different types of materials. Understanding the material that you're trying to clean and the type of dirt that you're dealing with will help you pick the right cleaning product with the right pH to get the result you want without damaging the material that you're cleaning. It's important to understand that absolutely everything has a pH value. The scale is numbered 1 to 14 with numbers 0 to 6 being acidic, numbers 8 to 14 being alkaline or basic and 7 being neutral. This floor was cleaned with a pH 13 detergent. High pH or high alkaline cleaning products are amazing at cleaning something like this filthy floor and they're not going to damage it in the process. By contrast this beautiful marble shower surround has been permanently damaged by a very low pH toilet bowl cleaner probably sitting at around pH 2 and containing hydrochloric acid. On the other end of the pH scale, roughly pH 13, we have a chemically burnt 100% wool rug that a dog peed on and the owner then tried to clean it with an oxidizing carpet cleaning product that is designed for plastic carpets that aren't susceptible to chemical burning the way wool or natural fibers are. The most important thing to note when dealing with the pH scale is that the scale is logarithmic, not linear. That basically means that for every single point up or down on the scale, the increase increase in pH strength is tenfold. In other words, the difference between pH 7 and pH 8 is a factor of 10 and the difference between pH 9 and pH 7 is a factor of 100. pH 10 and pH 7 is a factor of 1000 all the way up to pH 14 which is 10 million times stronger than pH 7. Please don't be fooled by the proximity in numbers on the scale. The difference between something sitting at pH 11 and something sitting at pH 13 is absolutely huge and I have chemically burned my skin with a pH 13 product. Not understanding how pH works can not only damage what you're trying to clean but worse can cause injury to yourself and others. So then, our different categories of cleaner fall into neutral, acidic or alkaline. Neutral cleaners have a pH of between 6 and 8 and are meant generally for daily cleaning of surfaces or for the cleaning of more delicate materials such as wool, silk or cotton. Neutral floor cleaners are also quite common as these aren't going to damage any sealants, finishes or the material itself like the marble we saw earlier which was etched by acid. pH neutral cleaning products are also gentler and safer meaning if curious kids or animals get their hands or paws on them they're less likely to cause any harm. Acidic cleaners have a pH below 6 and are mainly used for cleaning inorganic mineral based soils. For this reason one of the main places you will see acidic cleaners is in a bathroom. Cleaners with a low pH can also be used to clean toilet bowls, remove soap scum, lime and can be useful for degreasing. In carpet and upholstery cleaning and for cleaning fabrics, acidic cleaners can be very useful for removing rust stains and tannic soils such as tea, coffee and red wine. And because of the iron content, acidic cleaners can also be useful for the removal of blood stains. Particularly when cleaning fabrics and carpets, neutralizing a high alkaline cleaner with an acid rinse to return the material to neutral is industry best practice. Alkaline cleaning products are cleaning products with a pH above 8 and are the most common types of cleaning products available. General purpose cleaners generally have a pH between 9 and 11 and can be used to remove oils, particulate soiling, fats, sugars, organic soils and proteins and that's why we know these as general purpose cleaners. Laundry detergents, baking soda, washing soda and numerous other alkaline cleaning products that you pick up in the supermarkets are all examples of these. Heavy duty cleaners and degreasers usually have a pH of 13 to 14 and can be used to remove heavy grease, unblock drains, clean ovens so carbon and soot, remove oil, and various other cleaning tasks that require a high level of causticity. Side note, it took me about five goes to get that word right. Caustic soda, caustic soda? Mm. <clears throat> caustic soda and ammonia are good examples of high pH degreasers and cleaners. And these high pH products are also those most likely to cause damage to items you're trying to clean 
or cause injury to the user or anybody accidentally introduced to the chemistry. And be really careful with this because I've seen very bad chemical burns from oven cleaners, caustic soda, or any other high pH cleaning product. High pH products are extremely corrosive and can inflict really serious damage and burn. So be careful and take the necessary precautions whilst using them. Most organic dirt and soiling like sugars, fats, and proteins are acidic. So it makes sense that to clean with traditional detergents, we need an alkaline cleaning chemical. But because acids and alkalines neutralize each other, as soon as the cleaning product hits the dirt, it's neutralized, so not all of it is broken down by our cleaning agent. The two sides of the pH scale then can be likened to rows of soldiers neutralizing each other as they make contact. This is why sometimes buffering chemicals are added. A buffer is designed to maintain a detergent's pH, therefore giving it sustained performance. This is great news for cleaning, not so great for sensitive fibres and dyes. Natural fibres are particularly sensitive to dye bleed and chemical burning caused by high pH cleaning. This is what dye bleed looks like in the fibres of a wool rug in an 18th century house in Ireland. A burst pipe cascaded water through the 200 year old lime washed walls which turned the flood water to about pH 11.5. This caused the dyes to bleed in the rug and it took us 70 hours of painstaking work to fix it. This viscose and cotton sweet was also cleaned by using a high alkaline spot and stain remover that's readily available in the supermarket. This really should have been avoided and we were only able to reduce this mark by about 50%. Now, this particular sofa was about 15,000 euros. So it was really, really disappointing to have to tell the client that we couldn't actually remove the damage and that it could have been avoided in the first place by using the right pH level cleaning product for the task. Now it's not all doom and gloom as this enthusiastic and slightly unsettling lady is demonstrating. A basic understanding, and yes the pun is absolutely intended, of acids and bases is really useful for cleaning tasks. Here for example I'm using a high pH pre-spray to clean 2000 seats in a concert arena in Dublin. I'm utilizing the high pH cleaning product to break down sugars, proteins and fats from the food and drink that is spilled on the seats during events. I'm then rinsing the seats with acidified water to leave the upholstery in a pH neutral state so that it doesn't cause any irritation to concert goers when they sit on the seats later on. I've even made my own cleaning products that are not only eco-friendly, they're insanely cheap. They're so effective, I've thrown out all of this stuff from under my kitchen sink. Now I've covered a lot of ground here, so if you have any questions, fire them in the box below. My cleaning courses are in the description, as is the link to the cleaning how-to website with full tutorials, recipes and guides. And absolutely feel free to hit the like and subscribe button while you're down there. Carl here from Cleaning How To, thanks for watching. Water, because the soda crystals will dissolve better in warm water. And that's pretty much our bathroom cleaning mixture ready to go. You can actually make wash